I've never done one of these before. Um, something I'll probably start by introducing myself. I don't know how many of these I'll be able to do, um, partly because the battery on this phone drops like a fucking tank. <laughs> and um, I, I just can't afford to waste the electricity that I need for so many more important things. Um, but I'll see how it goes. I'll try and do one of these every few days at least. Um, and try just my best not to ramble. <laughs> Um, to actually kind of end these videos at some point. Um, yeah, I don't know when or even if I'll be able to find some more propane for the backup generator. Um, and it's impossible to tell how much is in there now because the... Because the meter has been fucked for a while now. Um, so the lights could just go on, go off, sorry, at any moment. Um... Every kilowatt counts. <laughs> so my name is John. Um, my parents called me after the author, actually, John Wyndham. Uh, I still, to this day, I'm not entirely sure why they did that, but they did, so I'll roll with it. I'm 20 years old. I have a, I had a part-time job at my local library here in Ellswood. Um... And as you can kind of guess from that, I'm really into reading and writing, actually. Um, before the light struck, um, what I really wanted to do with my life was be an author um, and write sci-fi novels. Uh, Philip K. Dick and especially Isaac Asimov are two of my just all-time favourite authors. And I really love reading their work. So sci-fi was what I wanted to get into. Uh, above everything. But that kind of got fucked, didn't it? <sighs> I'm doing these because... Well, there's part of me that's hoping that one day someone will actually see these. And it will have all been worth it. But there's no promise that, that will ever happen. Um, and I think <clears throat> the real reason I'm doing these is to just try and keep my mind occupied and do something. Um, I think the minute my brain starts to just stop functioning because it's not doing anything, not trying to stay alive or survive or just, I guess, do things that carry on making me human then I'm just gonna go insane and the real battle is to delay that as long as possible and I delay that by doing things like these and reading and writing and playing my acoustic guitar <laughs> <laughs> it used to be me and my uncle who lived here now it's just me um my uh, mum died uh when i was really young it's about two years old and my dad did not really take it well at all he um dropped me off here my uncles and kind of just fucked off uh, for the rest of his life, and I've not seen him since, nor do I particularly want to. Um, nor do I think that will ever happen anyway. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> Bet you'd rather be seeing this guy right now, wouldn't you? <laughs> Look at this photo every day when I get up. Reminds me of a simpler time. So I thought for this one I could probably give you a tour of where I spend most of my time. Uh, probably about 95% of it. And maybe go through some of the possessions that I own. The things that I have to keep me entertained. So, this is 
kind of mostly what it looks like. Yeah, a lot of crap lying around. Sorry. So I guess we could probably start round here. This is the uh, Christmas tree in the corner. It'll be December in a couple of months, and I would quite like to put it up to at least have some element of Christmassy stuff going on. Uh, yeah. So I've got a plant there and another plant here. Obviously, I can't use water on them. Can't afford to use that. Here's my acoustic guitar. I used to play in a band with a couple of mates. Once I had a string snap during a performance, actually, that wasn't fun <laughs> at all. But uh, it does the job. I enjoy playing it. I have this red book here that I use that I often write in and um, all my ideas. So whether it be lyrics, um, book writing, stuff like that, it always goes in here. I actually had a look at some of the lyrics that I used to write when I was younger and God, they are corny and so incel central. <laughs> yeah, kind of ashamed of that, to be honest. So here's the stuff that I'm reading at the moment. Um, well, actually, this is what I am reading at the moment. I tried it a long time ago. Wasn't really a massive fan. Um, enjoying it a lot more on this read, for sure. Uh, trying to diversify a little bit, at least, because... I mean, as you could see, sci-fi. <laughs> Thought I'd try something new. Got a couple of books on ancient Egypt here. I think I've got Watchmen lying around somewhere. Ah, yep, here it is. I read this a long time ago. Fucking loved it. Can't wait to reread that again. Uh, towel there. Um, I got my uncle's vinyl collection. Probably show you. <clears throat> when I was young, I used to come up here and... Um, in fact, there's vinyl players just over there. I'd plug it in, and now I can't really do it anymore, but I still do it sometimes to listen to a couple of songs. And it being my uncle's collection, it's mainly just like 80s goth rock. <laughs> um, but there's a couple of stuff that I that I like. Um, I think there's some Tears for Fears here somewhere, and some Pixies too. I think they're quite good. Um, Nirvana. I hear they're supposed to be quite good as well. I should probably listen to them at some point. Uh, yeah. Ah. So, over here I've got bodily functions. <laughs> Probably no need to expand more on that. I've got my bed. When I was younger I used to come up here and uh, read by the candlelight. And uh, I used to love that. I'd read out loud and it was... Generally had a lot of fun with that, and I sometimes do it, because I've got a couple of matches lying about and a candle somewhere around here, so I do sometimes try and do that. That's that's what I'll sleep on. Got the hatch in the corner there. Um, got some wood here. This is mainly what I used from the renovations from my uncle was working up here before everything happened. And I kind of bring that downstairs and use it to light fires and cook um, at night when I get those couple of hours. I think that's probably it, I would say. Oh, wait, no. Got my best friend over here, Barry. This is the guy that I talk to the most, without a shadow of a doubt. My only companion up here. I normally talk to him when I'm feeling quite alone, which is most of the time. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Uh... <clears throat> that's my... Uh... That's my abode. It's the reason why I get up every morning and do something with my life. It's very easy to just stay lying down and not want to get up or do anything because there's little point to doing it. But it... I just try and find things to keep myself occupied. Just to keep myself going from one second to the next, one minute to the next, day after day, month after month. And, you know, it's about taking it day by day. That's the important thing. Because um, I know that at some point I will meet someone. And it'll all be worth it. It's just getting to that point is tough. <sighs> and... Well, I mean, some days are good, some days are bad. 
Except... <laughs> the uh, bad days are really bad. And the good days... They're not that good either. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. This is going to be a bit of a personal one today. Although I don't know why I'm saying that. These are all quite personal, but... <sighs> this one all the more so. Um, a long time ago, someone wrote me a letter. And... It hurt me a lot because it managed to tap into one of my deepest insecurities. Which is something that I have tried my whole life to stick to, and it's sometimes nosedived completely. And that is, at the very root, to be a good person. And I, I fucked up fucked up really badly and it wasn't the first time and it won't be the last this is addressed to all of those people that I've let down and I know that there's very little chance that they'll ever actually see this or read what I've written but at this rate, I'm doing it more because I feel like I have to. Rather than because I actually think that they will see this because at this rate, I've got to be honest, they're probably burned to a crisp. As much as it pains me to say. But I believe that to carry on living in this fuck of a world. I've got to carry on finding beauty in annihilation and meaning in isolation. And sometimes it's hard, but it's something that I've just got to carry on doing. And this, this is how I do that. So here it goes. <clears throat> this intro is probably longer than the letter I've actually written. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> to those I've loved the most. I never wrote a reply, so here it is. I'm sorry it took so long, you deserved as much, and it was cowardly of me not to face the music. The way you feel isn't objectionable. As one of your closest friends, and you as mine, I mistreated you terribly, simply by neglect and disregard. I didn't consider your emotions, and I overlooked the consequences it would go on to have on our friendship. In the sense, there no longer was one. I was focused on my own needs and what I wanted, and it was so selfish to behave as I did. <sighs> You'd always been there for me, and... <sighs> the least I could do in ret is return the favour. I hope that wherever you are right now, cooped up in an attic, or ashes scattered to the wind, You'll see this, and you'll find it in your heart to forgive me. I miss you the most, and I'd do anything to see you again. This is to everyone else I've let down. In my solitude, I've had a chance for introspection. Something I wouldn't have done otherwise. It's forced me to do something. 
admit regret. There has never been a time in my life, nor ever will be, where I wish for human companionship more than right now in the contents of this letter. I'm starting to think that there is no price too high for a chance, an instance, to see someone again, to touch hands, to feel intimacy. And the best things I had, the people I love the most, I dream about. Holly. I... Give me a second. Holly, you are an unbelievably amazing person. We often clashed on personal opinions and things like that, but at the root, we were incredibly good friends, and I'm so glad I met you. I remember the time that we went ice skating when we were on a holiday in New York. We toured the Empire State Building. We went to Times Square and it was just, <laughs> it was magical. And that's when you told me. And I couldn't keep it to myself. I tried my best. But the weight of it was just too much, and I had to tell other people, I had to. I couldn't keep it to myself, I had to tell your parents, our friends. They had a right to know when you... When we talked about it afterwards, you felt differently, and it was so stupid of me to think that I was right. You deserved as much to keep it between us two, and... I let you down. I should have kept it to myself. You're not someone who gives things away easily, and I didn't see you again until... Well, you know how the curtains fell. I'm sorry. <sighs> Richard. You were another one of my best friends. Probably the closest person I ever had. I felt comfortable telling you anything, and that's extremely rare. Normally I distance myself from things like that. With Holly, I loved spending time with her, but there wasn't... There wasn't something deeper. It was still very surface level with her. But with you, I felt like I could... Yeah, like I could tell you anything. I had a tendency to make you feel worse about yourself. To make myself feel better and it culminated in what... In what I think you know is probably coming. We were with Robert and Liam and we went down to the lake and... They peer pressured you into doing something that you clearly, clearly didn't want to do, and I could see it on your face, I could see it in your expression. 
you didn't want it and I just stood by and I let it happen. You avoided me for ages and then told me finally that you didn't want to see me again. And I tried to downplay the severity of what happened. I, I was so ashamed of my own indifference, Richard. I felt so guilty over what I'd done that I tried to make you feel less significant about it. For my own comfort, my own peace of mind. And I never apologised. I think I miss you the most as well. God, I'm so alone. <sighs> There's also Melissa, who I got arrested. Kieran, who I stole from for months, and that, that poor boy that I just, that I beat the shit out of for the absolute most ridiculous motivations. My uncle, who always wanted to spend more time with me and I didn't make as much time for as I should. I often treated you as an inconvenience. You were always there for me. Always, without fucking fail, and... <sighs> you cared about me, and my well-being, and... I just did not return the favour for you. But Richard and Melissa, I think, I think you, I think I miss you two the most, and God, especially, especially Holly. God, I fucked you all over so badly. Why, 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 why did I do that? What the fuck was going through my head? I miss you guys so much and I had a dream last night. 
In the dream I was chasing the light. At center. A bright warm flame in the midst of a cold, desolate space. A single source unattached. Suspended in limbo and in disbelief. The closer I got, the further it was. The dreamy origin of humanity's inevitable extinction was no more than a, a minor glow. And I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared because I knew I would catch up to it. Momentum was finite. In a vast empty landscape of lackless matter, it looked defeated, in its last limbs, its final leg. And I knew it would be within my grasp, and everything would work out. I saw a speck, which grew into a figure, which grew into my uncle, and tears came to my eyes. I went towards him. His skin was brittle and cracked, his hair faint and wispy, his eyes hollow with fortune. Our hands were almost touching, embraced on the verge, a guide to my inclination. A thunderous vibration swept. He danced on the brink of an unknown future to the echo of a vanished past. And then like clockwork, the light went out. 